Hey there, popcorn pals, get ready for a wild ride, as I take you through an American action adventure science fiction film, titled After Earth. But beware, there are spoilers ahead, so hold on to your hats and take care not to choke on your popcorn. In the distant future, a devastating change in the environment caused by global warming leads to widespread destruction. In response, an organization called the United Ranger Corps is formed, with a mission to help humanity evacuate Earth, and seek a new home beyond our solar system. After a long journey, the human race finally settles on a pristine planet called Nova Prime. Turns out the planet is already home to an advanced alien species called Skrell. The aliens release their weapon, Ursus, to kill the humans. These creatures are blind, but they hunt by sensing the pheromones the human brain releases when frightened. Once again humanity is in danger, and on the brink of extinction. After 1000 years, the commander of the Ranger Corps, General Cypher discovers a way to hide his fear through a technique called ghosting making him invisible to the Ursus. After the war, Katai, son of Cypher, dedicates himself to intense training because he wants to be like his father. However, despite his impressive test scores in the classroom, he is not doing well in the actual field, so his application to join the Ranger Corps is denied. Later that night, after Cypher returns home from a mission, Katai tells him that he failed to join the Ranger Corps. Instead of comforting his son, Cypher yells at Katai, and tells him he did not try enough, and that he was not ready. Later, Cypher brings a necklace to his wife, Faya, and tells her he is going to retire after his final mission in Iphidus, where he would be training cadets. Faya tells him to be the father their son needs. She believes Katai blames himself for his sister's death, Senshi, and advises Cypher to have a heart-to-heart -heart with their son. Later, Cypher goes into Katai's room, and tells him he is going with him to Iphidus. Next day, as they prepare to leave, Katai observes a disabled ranger approach his father, who thanks Cypher for saving him from an Ursa. The ranger asks his friends to stand him up, Cypher tells him it's not necessary, but the ranger still salutes him to express his respect for him. When the ship leaves for Iphidus, Katai tells Cypher he is reading the same book her sister used to read, called Moby Dick. Cypher tells Katai to get some sleep until they arrive. When Cypher falls asleep, Katai gets off his seat to discover the ship, he enters a prohibited area, where the Ursa is being held. He is caught by a guard, who scolds him for entering the room without reading the warning sign. However, when the other rangers tell the guard that he is Cypher's son, the guard allows him to go near the Ursa. As he slowly walks towards the Ursa, he begins recalling the time when his sister, Senshi, put him in a glass containment to prevent the Ursa from smelling him. Suddenly the Ursa roars, causing him to get startled. At the same time, Cypher wakes up, he touches the ship, and senses something is wrong, he then orders the rangers to secure the cargo, and tells Katai to sit on his chair and strap himself to it. Cypher enters the cockpit, and warns the pilots, that they could be flying towards an asteroid shower, but before they could change the direction, the ship gets hit by an asteroid, causing it to shake. Cypher orders the pilots to enter through a wormhole, to prevent the ship from being destroyed by asteroids. As the ship exits the wormhole, it appears in front of Earth. The ship's computer warns them about Earth's air being toxic for humans, so Cypher orders the pilots to travel to another nearby planet. However, the pilots inform him that the ship is too damaged to enter another wormhole, leaving them no option but to land on Earth. As the ship enters Earth's atmosphere, Katai starts panicking, but Cypher tries to calm him down. Suddenly the ship begins to break, causing Cypher and everyone around Katai to be blown out of the ship. As the ship begins to fall at abnormal speed, Katai loses his consciousness. Later, when Katai gains back his consciousness, he starts looking for his father. Katai eventually finds him, but he is unconscious. When Cypher gains back consciousness, Katai informs him that the back of the ship is missing, which was holding the Ursa in it. Cypher tells Katai to find the emergency beacon to call for help, but unfortunately the beacon is damaged. Katai puts his father on a stretcher, and learns that both of his legs are broken. He takes Cypher into the cockpit. Cypher turns on the computer, and discovers there's another beacon in the tail, which is about 100 kilometers away from the ship. Since Cypher can't retrieve the beacon due to his broken legs, he gives this mission to Katai and hands him his weapon, and some filtration inhalers to help him breathe Earth's air, Cypher tells Katai that the planet they landed on is Earth, where every creature has evolved to kill humans. Katai then gets a vision of his sister being killed by an Ursa, so he asks Cypher about the Ursa they were carrying on the ship, to which he replies, it might be dead from the impact, but tells Katai to be cautious. Cypher lets Katai know that he will be guiding him through the camera in his life suit. Katai begins his mission by climbing a rocky mountain. As he reaches the cliff, he is shocked to see the beauty of Earth, since he has lived his whole life in space. Cypher then deploys a swarm of probes in order to spot the Ursa. 
He then informs Katai that the Earth's temperature drops to freezing cold at nights, so he must find a hot spot to warm himself every night. Cypher checks his injury, and realizes his bone is broken. He then tries to take medicine, but it warns him that it could make him fatigued and decrease his vision clarity, so he decides not to take it. Later, Cypher notices something approaching Katai, which turns out to be an evolved wild baboon, so he tells Katai to not make any movement. But Katai gets startled, and throws a rock at it, which attracts the whole group of baboons. Katai starts to run while being chased by them. Cypher gives him the direction to a nearby river. Katai successfully finds the river and jumps into it, leaving the baboons behind. But he still keeps running, thinking he is being chased, until Cypher informs him that the baboons are no longer after him, and tells him to take a knee. Cypher notices poison in Katai's bloodstream, and tells him to check himself. Katai sees a poisonous leech on his hand, and shakes it off in panic. Later the poison starts affecting Katai, Cypher tells him to immediately inject himself with the antitoxin. Although he can no longer see, he manages to inject himself by pushing his chest against the injection. He then falls unconscious for the antitoxin to work in his body. A moment later, Katai regains his consciousness. Cypher informs him about a nearby hotspot since the temperature is going down rapidly, so he begins to run. Katai eventually finds the hotspot. As he checks his inhalers, he realizes two of them are damaged. Cypher tells him to take an inhaler, so he does it. Later that night, Katai asks his father how he learned ghosting. Cypher says that an Ursa once shot its pincer through his shoulder, and tried to drown him in the river. But once he accepted his death, and stopped being afraid, the Ursa could no longer see him. And he managed to kill it. He then adds that fear is not real, but a product of our imagination. The next day, Katai begins his journey again. He spots dead bodies of the baboons, Cypher detects on his computer that it is done by the Ursa. So he tells Katai to run. Katai stops at the end of a cliff. Cypher tells Katai to show him his filtration inhalers, when he sees that he only has two inhalers left, he tells him he needs at least three inhalers to make it to the tail, and orders him to stop the mission, and return back to him. Katai begins to think about how he had to watch his sister die helplessly, he doesn't want the same to happen to his father. Katai tells Cypher he is not a coward, although Cypher doesn't want him to continue the mission, Katai jumps off the cliff, and starts gliding with the help of his suit. Shortly after, a condor appears, and starts chasing him. Katai manages to dodge the condor, but when he thinks the condor is gone, it appears in front of him and grabs him, causing Cypher to lose contact with Katai. Later, Katai wakes up in a nest with condor's chicks. As he tries to leave, he sees a group of lions coming towards him. The condor tries to keep the lions away from its nest. A lion manages to get inside, but as it attacks, Katai throws it out of the nest. Another lion manages to get inside, but Katai uses his blade to make a hole, causing the lion to fall through it. As Katai climbs down the tree, he sees the angry condor mourning over its dead chicks. A moment later, Katai uses his last inhaler, and builds a raft to travel the river. As he takes a nap, he starts to dream of his sister, Senshi, who tells him that he did the right thing by staying in the glass containment that day, and yells at Katai to wake up. Katai realizes the temperature around him is going down. He has to find a hot spot before he freezes to death. Unfortunately Katai falls to the ground due to the freezing cold, thinking he is going to die. When Katai wakes up the next day, he realizes that the condor sacrificed its life to save Katai, by laying on top of him. Katai eventually finds the tail, and quickly grabs some filtration inhalers, and uses one of them. He then realizes that the Ursa has escaped. Back at the ship, Cypher is dreaming of little Katai handing him his cutlass. Katai finds a communicator, and the beacon, and tries to communicate with Cypher, but Katai can't hear him due to electrical interference, because Katai is in a black zone, but he is not aware of it, Katai still tries to use the beacon, which doesn't work. Cypher watches Katai getting frustrated on the screen. Katai eventually realizes that he has to use the beacon from top of the mountain. As Katai heads towards the mountain, he finds the dead body of a ranger, which is a trap set by the Ursa to sense his fear. Cypher notices that the Ursa has found Katai. Katai begins to run, while the Ursa keeps following him. He tries to use the beacon, but he needs to go higher. He then enters a cave, in order to find a way to the top of the mountain. There the Ursa attacks him, but gets stuck under the rocks. Katai begins to run from it, and hides underwater. He then sees a reflection of light and starts following it. He finds a way out of the cave, and starts climbing to reach the top of the mountain. Suddenly, the Ursa emerges from the water, and grabs Katai's foot. Katai opens his cutlass between the walls, and kicks the Ursa to let go of him. 
and begins climbing to reach the top. As Katai tries to use the beacon, the Ursa grabs him, causing him to drop the beacon, and hits him on the rocks before throwing him away. As Katai lies in excruciating pain, he thinks of the day his sister, Senshi protected him. And the advice his father gave him, about coming to his senses, and feeling his surroundings. Allowing him to overcome his fear, and control his emotions. The Ursa can no longer sense Katai. He grabs his cutlass, and starts attacking the confused Ursa. Katai then stabs the Ursa, resulting in its death. Katai is unaware that his father is watching it all before he loses consciousness. Katai then grabs the beacon, and uses it to call for help. A moment later, the rescue team arrives, and finds Cypher who is unconscious. Back in Nova Prime, Katai comes to check on his father. When Cypher sees him, he orders the rangers to stand him up, and salutes his son. Katai then rushes to hug his father. And tells him he wants to work with his mother, and Cypher replies, he wants to do the same. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more, turn on the notifications, and leave a like, which also helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.